you've ever used an NMR magnetometer, it probably looked like this. Our customers often just call it the Metrolab, but its official name is Precision Teslameter PT2025. Now we're introducing its successor, the PT2026. Pretty original name, huh? Let me show you some of the things that it can do. Let's start with a quick tour of the system. This is the main unit. All the good stuff is on the back. This is where the probe plugs in. Unlike the PT2025, the coax for the RF and the other signals are all on one connector. Right below it are the communication ports, USB, and Ethernet. Then there are these two BNC connectors. The first one is a trigger input or output, and the second one is a 10 MHz reference, also an input or output. Finally, this DIN connector allows you to monitor the NMR signal on a scope, just like the PT2025. On the other hand, we have the NMR probes. The one looks like a, a PT2025 probe, but on the inside it's completely different. We currently use rubber as NMR sample for fields up to around 10 Tesla, and heavy water for higher fields. The other type has a remote measurement head, separated by a few meters of coax. This is useful for small gaps or hostile environments such as cryogenic or high radiation applications. This box is a multiplexer. It allows you to connect multiple probes to a single main unit. This is an 8-port model. There's also a 4-port model, or you can use two levels of multiplexers to for 64 probes. Now let's take a quick tour of the user interface. Unlike the PT2025, the PT2026 has no controls or displays. Everything is done via software. We do have plans for front panel controls, but it'll just be a touch screen with this interface. The main screen shows the flux density in the units of your choice, textually as well as on a strip chart display. If you selected measurement averaging, you also see a standard deviation of the measurements, shown as error bars on the plot. You can also display the NMR signal, or the spectrum showing the NMR resonance peak. These other tabs allow you to change parameters. Here, for example, we have the search range and averaging parameters, as well as advanced features that you probably shouldn't touch. But don't worry, even if you do mess it all up, you can get back to the factory settings with this pull-down menu right down here. The File tab allows you to record and playback measurements. The Setup tab contains various system setup functions. And this button gets you online help. OK, that's it for the tour. Now let's see what the beast can do. We claim to have good resolution. Let's see what that means in real life. Watch what happens when I press on our permanent magnet. This is almost a kilo of iron and feels pretty solid. But the field increase due to the elastic deformation of the yoke is clearly measurable. And when I breathe on the magnet, I immediately see a field decrease due to the heating of the magnet. Proof positive that marketing people are full of hot air. All these changes are in the 1 to 10 ppm range. Huge on our scale of things. Now let's move to a slightly larger magnet, our 2 ton lab magnet at about 1.5 Tesla. We immediately observe a major improvement with a nice long NMR signal good uniformity, and excellent standard deviation. Here we can repeat our sensitivity experiment. I just press on the yoke, and we can see that even a weakling like myself can deform a magnet this size. Of course, given the magnet size and the forces involved, the effect is much smaller, only on the order of 0.1 to 1 ppm, but it's still clearly detectable. I'd like to show you one more little experiment to demonstrate the effect of inhomogeneous field. To do this, we mount a gradient coil on one of our probes. As we increase the current in the gradient coils, the NMR signal decreases and the uniformity indicator decreases until the instrument can't measure anymore. What we find is that the PT2026 tolerates about 50% more field inhomogeneity than the PT2025, and we think we can do quite a bit better yet. And that's it. Thanks for watching our demo. As the system evolves, we hope to post additional videos on YouTube, so we hope to see you back.